What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. If y'all never been here before, my name is Daniel Williams. This is the Cedar Ridge Chronicles and I want to welcome y'all. Today I have got a really, really special video for y'all. It's probably the favorite video that I've ever edited ever. Possibly because it took me so long to do and so much went into it between planning and getting everything just right. But I'm going to give y'all a little bit of a background as to what's going on so y'all understand what's happening in this video. Y'all remember, if y'all have been watching my channel for any length of time, back two years ago, I had an aortic aneurysm, my aorta split, and I started bleeding out internally. The doctors told me that I probably wasn't going to live and ended up making it through. I had a 2% chance, and here I am. So during recovery, I start watching a couple YouTubers that are surf fishing down in South Alabama. And I started recognizing the places and the fish that they're catching. I'm like, man, this is the same stuff I've always done since I was a kid. And I just got to watch them because I could relate. I knew where they were at. I knew what lures they were throwing. I knew what fish they were catching. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, this is cool. And I had never watched YouTubers before. I had watched YouTube to learn how to do stuff. That's how I learned how to do this. But I had not ever watched YouTubers. <laughs> and I didn't know what a subscription was to a YouTube channel. So there's a guy named Brad Warren. He's got a channel called Bearded Brad. He's one of the guys that I started watching during this period of time. Well, Brad's a really nice guy on camera, seems like a really cool guy. Doesn't He's not afraid to talk about his faith, talk about he believes in God. You know, I could at the time I could relate, and not just that, but I was going through an emotional time in my life and needed a little bit, bit of that in whatever content I was watching anyway. So through watching all of this, I come across a video where Brad is talking about an event that changed his life forever. Well, there's a picture of a house on fire on the thumbnail. Well, he starts talking on this video and he's extremely emotional man holding back tears the whole time like i'm getting emotional because he's sitting there talking about he's in the house and his wife smells smoke she's pregnant they've got a one-year-old son and his parents are also living in the house at the time his wife smells smoke they get up go downstairs and the entire living room is engulfed in flames they all have to evacuate the house and stand there and watch it burn completely to the ground they lost everything that they had. Brad's in there talking about this in this video, and it's just tearing me up because, you know, I had recently gone through something myself that changed my life forever and had no idea this had happened to him, even though I've been sitting there watching him for a year. I mean, he was one of the reasons why I quit my job to do this and to do this because he's a YouTuber for a living. Like, that's what he does for a living. I'm sitting there thinking, man, if I could make some money on YouTube and I could make some money working in my house, I'm done. Like after almost dying, I was not living the way that I wanted to or the way I needed to. And that's how my channel got started. So in a roundabout way, I kind of felt like I owed it to this guy to try to reproduce his deer that he lost in the fire. He put a post on Facebook where he had a skull mount of this big old buck and he had put on there, I wish I had this deer back. We lost it in the fire. Well, after having seen the video and after having seen this post, I sent him a message on Facebook, said, man, I'm a taxidermist up here in North Alabama. We come down there on vacation some. I might be able to rebuild this rack if you've got some measurements or some pictures, whatever. He didn't have any measurements and the pictures he had were the ones that were on that Facebook post. And I was like, okay, cool, I'll see what I can do. And that was pretty much the end of it. Well, then that was about nine months ago, I started working on this video. So I've been building this rack, built the whole thing from scratch. You all see all of it on the video. But what we have done, there's a guy named Drew Giles. And Drew, I only knew from uh, social media. We were friends on Facebook and the group called The Fever. Uh, Drew is the owner of The Fever. He's the one that started this. He's got uh, tournaments that he sponsors down at the beach, big tournaments. He does uh, saltwater fishing tournaments. He does disc golf tournaments. He owns Giles Customs, which does home restoration and home remodeling, all kind of stuff. Just a really cool guy, really neat guy, talented, and just super down to earth. Like I finally got to meet him this last week. And what he did for me in this video was kind of amazing. Like not knowing me personally, I got in touch with him and said, man, do you by any chance know Brad Warren personally? He said, yeah, he said, hey, we're actually pretty good friends. I said, well, is there any way that you can get Brad to come to the store to where I can surprise him with this deer mount. Because what I decided to do was just mount the entire deer. I wasn't going to give him just a skull back. I'm going to do a full shoulder mount and just come busting up in there with the thing and give it to him and just see what he says, you know. 
So Drew gets in touch with Brad, tells Brad that his son's friend wants to meet bearded Brad and get his picture made with him. So Brad, being the nice, cool guy that he is, tells him, anytime, whatever day you want, just let me know when to be there. I'll be there. We'll get our pictures. So we're down at the beach this last week on vacation, and Drew contacts me and says, hey, just, just let Brad know, you know, whenever's good for him, we can be there. Brad said, okay, just let me know. So I told Drew, you know, just see if, if we can go today or tomorrow, whenever, just, just let him know. So Drew texts him, texts me back, and Brad is already up at the store. Drew says he wants to meet me up there and watch all this go down. So me and my buddy Chad that's on vacation with me, Chad grabs a camera. We're going to come busting up in there just like the show Cheaters with a camera and a deer head <laughs> and just go walking up in the store and just be like, hey, look, we got this. <laughs> so anyway, we meet up at, at uh, Beach Bum Outdoors. If y'all ever see me talk about Beach Bum Outdoors, I always promote it because Brad and Matthew, the two guys that kind of got me through my heart surgery with their content and stuff, they're the guys that own that store along with a guy named Brant Peacher. So I try to be supportive of that because in a roundabout way, I feel like I kind of owe it to them. They helped me out in a time of need, even though they didn't know it. God used them to help me, and now I'm going to help them through God and through my channel, whatever I need to do. Uh, it's just a cool feeling to be able to come in here and build something, do something that God has blessed me with to be able to bless someone else through a horrible time in their life and through a horrible situation. It may give them a little bit of a silver lining at the edge of that horrible dark cloud. So when y'all see me talking about Beach Bum Outdoors all the time, now y'all know why. <laughs> but anyway, we get to Beach Bum Outdoors. Drew goes in, makes sure that Brad is there. Lo and behold, they're in there doing a podcast. So Drew comes back out, gets in the car. We sit in there, wait on the podcast to be over with. Well, Matthew Isbell comes out. We realize the podcast's over. I holler at him, let him know we were about to go in there. He said, yeah, he said, Brad's in there. Y'all go ahead. So we turn the camera on, and here we go. But y'all, I'm not going to tell y'all any more because I want y'all to watch the video and watch kind of how this unfolds. If y'all got any questions about anything that happens or why any of this happens, whatever, just comment below and ask, and I will be glad to answer these questions. But y'all, please be sure to go check out The Fever. Buy y'all some merchandise if you want from Drew because he's such a cool guy about getting all this stuff set up for me. Thank you to Chad Petty, one of my best friends ever, for running the camera, coming with me, and helping me get all this stuff done. And thank you, Brad Warren, for having the channel, for believing in God, for putting your content out there for guys like me to watch just to be inspired. One of the reasons why I quit my job and why I do what I do. Okay, as y'all can see, I have already built the main frame of this thing. I've got a picture of it right here, is all that we've got to go by. I believe that's going to be really close to the frame of this guy. But as we build on it, we'll be able to tell a little bit more about it. Well, I don't, I've never done this before with an entire rack. Uh, I don't think that it's going to be that difficult, uh, but I do think it's going to take several stages. What I'm going to try to do is we're going to start out by building the main beams first. I'm going to go ahead and just sculpt the main beams all the way to the tip. Just do them solid with no tines on them and no detail on them. I'm going to make them a little bit, maybe a quarter inch uh, smaller than the actual beam will be in the finished stages. And what we'll do is I'm going to let that completely cure and then go back and drill holes in it where the tines need to be. And we'll go back and set some wire in those holes and then re-epoxy over the entire thing and build the tines as we're doing that. I think that will hold everything in place, make it really solid. And then once we get done with that, we'll go ahead and unscrew. I've got the base of each one of these wires screwed together, like sandwiched in here with these screws. And there's probably about this much, it probably comes on down to here, of extra wire. So what I'm going to do is just leave the bottoms of the bases completely undone. And when we get done with everything else, we're going to unbolt this and then I'll sculpt the bottoms connected to that wire and we'll go ahead and build a skull cap too. I think building the skull cap out of epoxy would probably be the best thing to do. I've got four pounds of epoxy. That should be plenty to get the whole thing done and it will just make for a really solid piece once it's completely finished. But anyway guys, Y'all stay tuned, we're gonna get started on this thing.
All right, that's finished. Now that the antlers are finished, got the rack put together, it's completely dry, drilled my holes, got the cape stretched, ready to go, got the form prepped, and we were about to put this deer together. What I'm gonna do is screw the antlers on after I get the cape on, and I'm gonna go ahead and use a epoxy sculpt and just do a two-part epoxy, and epoxy the, the antlers directly onto the head uh, after they're screwed in just to give a little bit more strength and support because that whole rack, skull cap, and everything is just straight epoxy. So we'll do that and then maybe smooth the edges with a little bit of modeling clay. But anyway, guys, let's get this thing put together.
that's got them on a form. So now I gotta let this thing dry. And the next few days, we're gonna start working on the antlers, getting them uh, smoothed down just a little bit, getting them painted, and try to make that rat look like a real rat. But I think he turned out pretty dang good, considering that the rack was made completely out of epoxy. And obviously the cape did not go to this rack. <laughs> I think it's gonna be a really good looking mount when we get him done. Okay, back in the shop again. I've got the deer just about finished. If everything goes to plan, he'll be finished up today. Uh, yesterday, I did put a little bit of a base coat on these antlers, just a little bit of some yellows and browns and reddishes and, you know, just to kind of get it basically the color that I want. Now we're gonna go back and start putting in some of the darker colors, some of the highlights, and see if we can't get the antlers looking pretty good. We'll go ahead and epoxy and paint this deer today also. So y'all stick around, let's get this thing finished.
Guys, we finally got this deer finished. We're about to pack up, get ready to head down to the coast, and hopefully we can meet up with Brad at some point in time and give him his buck, see what he thinks. I am no artist, I'm just a taxidermist. But I think it turned out pretty good to be completely fake antlers. I wish the paint was a little bit better, but I guess everything that you ever do, you kind of wish it was a little bit better. But I think it looks pretty dang good, consider. All right, well, I'm gonna get everything cleaned up and head out. Hopefully we'll find him. We'll see what he thinks. Dang it, man. What's going on, guys? Well, we are pulling out of the beach house right now. You can see it back there behind us, along with a deer head in the back of the vehicle, going to meet up with Brad Warren. He has absolutely no idea that we're bringing this deer head, <laughs> and we're going, uh, Drew Giles is gonna meet us up at Beach Bum Outdoors. He has told Brad, that his son's friend wants to meet him <laughs> and get a picture made with him. Little does he know that his son's friend is actually Daniel with a deer head that he has finished for him. 
and uh, like I said, he has no idea that we're doing it, so it's going to be really cool uh, to show up, just kind of see his reaction. Hopefully, he likes the thing, and uh, y'all stay tuned. We're going to be there here in about 20 minutes. Here we go. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, I'm a slacker. I know. Look at there. <clears throat> so uh, you're filming it. So this is a surprise for Brad, it right? It is. All yeah. Right. Sweet. <laughs> it is. This is uh, what he lost in the fire. It is. Yeah, I tried to remake it the best I could. Yeah. I just did a full shoulder mount for him. That's awesome, dude. How's it going? This is Chad. Sure, man. Man. I met you before. Okay. You okay if we bust up in here with it? No, thing. go for it. <laughs> So this was a that was a different paint than I already had. I already had a paint, so I would have built up it was from scratch and then mounted it over that. Yeah. I videoed the whole thing too, so it all be like a whole YouTube game to build it all. I can please do it right now. You walked in and I was like, what's he doing with that? And I was like, holy crap, I forgot what you're talking about. That. Yeah. that is so cool. Thank you. That is awesome. We gotta get a picture of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that that was I don't have a good beer there. So yeah. I, make it. I, I didn't have the full thing, I had just the antlers. Right. But I had, they were hanging in my son's nursery. <laughs> the oldest one. So they were in his nursery. Yeah. Um, this would be a perfect deal, at least give you a beer. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I really appreciate it. I don't know what you're doing. That's not going to be funny. Oh, it's going to be That's awesome. Def 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 I want to say something so bad. It's going to be down to the beach house. Not a clue. I got a picture standing there with me looking at the water with him in my hand. Like, <laughs> looking across the ocean. That's so appreciate that. I've never had a picture with one of my deer heads at the beach. Yeah. That's cool. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it. So it wasn't like a whole lot about... I do... My son's I'm just saying, does one. Does Well, you said that, and then I saw y'all met Robert, and I was yeah. like, he uh, wants to meet me after me. No, no. Well, I mean, it was a different buddy. He actually, did, he actually saw you. He came in to the store when you were when you were down there at the uh, liquidation store. Okay. Yeah. And we left out of there, and the guy was driving home, and the dude's like, freaking out. He's like, dude, that's pretty bro. He's like, I watch all the videos. Like, I didn't get a picture with him, so I hate to. He's like, I didn't know if he cared. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.